Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Wednesday to all of you, and a quick shout out to my newest patron, Benjamin W. Thank you for the support. Neat Sal on Twitter puts together this spreadsheet of Tesla analyst price targets and all of the recent changes. Right now, the highest on the street is Pierre Farragou from New Street Research with $1,580 for a one-year Tesla price target. Yes, there are some higher targets, but they go out to 2024 and 2025. There's also a Google Doc link that I'll put in the description below. Carmine's import service on YouTube had a great video of the new Model S Plaid track mode in real life being tested and used with some commentary. So I'll play you a quick clip, full video linked below. And I think you're gonna be more than satisfied on the uh, racetrack. I think that, you know, your stopping times, I think, uh, are gonna probably impress I mean, unbelievably impressed. I, I matter of fact, I can't wait to test the unplugged uh, ceramic kit with the new software. So I'm eager to test that. I'm going to be testing some other brake pads as well. But I can't wait to test the unplugged ceramic kit because I have a feeling it's going to be such a jump that it's going to be ridiculous. We're going to try a really high speed stop here just to see just to see how she does. And you can see the top speed is increased to 175. So we got a new top speed and I am braking. I am braking right now and it stopped just fine. So look, critically high brake temperature detected, but we were able to hit a 175 miles per hour. Um, so it's 175 miles per hour. Uh, we do have a critically high brake temperature detected. Uh, how does the brake pedal feel? Uh, not bad. I got to tell you, it doesn't feel bad. Uh, could you keep going on a racetrack like this? Uh, no, you could not. You, you would need race pads, but it's still stopping. So, and let me demonstrate that to you. So we don't, we, we don't have a bunch of, you know, people saying, oh no, and we could still stop. But what would happen is on a, on a high speed track, you would not be able to make laps. Okay you would not be able to make laps. I hope this is informational. This is a, this has been, this is just a huge, huge leap forward for Tesla. And uh, this is going to be, uh, make the 2022 track season extremely interesting. Um, there is going to be some, there is going to be uh, some really, really uh, interesting things that happen at the at the racetracks around the country and the world and one more quick video that I had to share Yes, Carl You are so beautiful You got the f***ing megaphone working? Yeah, I got it going <laughs> You are so beautiful Michael Rigoni shared this image on Twitter, and I think it's really important to remember the scale of Giga Texas, not just the current Gigafactory that you can see here in red, but the size of the land that they own and the potential for future expansion. And to give you some context, in case you've never seen this image, here are the land sizes relative to one another where Tesla has locations. So Giga Texas absolutely dwarfs all of the other locations. So even when Giga Austin is up and running and scaled, it's still barely scratching the surface of what that total land capacity will eventually be producing in the years to come. We got an update from JB Straubel and Redwood Materials. By the end of this year, Panasonic will include Redwood's copper foil produced from recycled materials back into new battery production at the Gigafactory. This will be the first time batteries will be recycled, remanufactured, and returned to the same factory in a closed loop. So yes, a new storyline here that Tesla is now this year going to be using more recycled materials for its battery production as other automakers are still scrambling to figure out step one. This recycled copper foil will be for the anode and Redwood is going to basically make it in the first half of the year and then give it to Panasonic for them to then use in the back half of this year at Giga Nevada. It should be noted Redwood doesn't just recycle EV batteries but they recycle consumer electronics as well 
and they extract materials like cobalt, nickel, lithium that are usually mined and then supply those back to Panasonic and Redwood is also working with Amazon. And a lot of you guys know I'm really rooting for Redwood, not just because of their mission and what they're trying to do, but on a personal level for JB after going through losing his wife last year, I just really want to see them doing well and this is definitely a step in the right direction. And don't forget Redwood has much bigger plans than just recycling. They're trying to build an entire closed loop system. So they're looking to build a $2 billion factory that will produce cathodes and anode foils up to a projected volume of 100 gigawatt hours per year by 2025, good for 1 million vehicles. I just had to share this quickly as Mike Levine, if you're not familiar, is Ford's North American Product Communications Director. You would usually pick somebody that has some class, has some tact, and is good at networking, building relationships. But I have seen so many childish type things from Mike Levine, and here is exhibit A. His tears are as delicious as his grammar is atrocious, referring to Gary Black, talking about some grammatical errors, avoiding the entire point of the tweet. I don't know about you guys, but if I was running a company, I would not want my product communications director doing stuff like this in such a public manner. And look, I get it, Twitter brings out this in people, it just makes you want to say things and have those knee-jerk reactions, but in a professional setting with a check mark and representing Ford like this, you just shouldn't be doing this stuff, in my opinion. Really cool story here from Rob Robson. I introduced my dad to Tesla and Tesla stock last year. He invested 50K, now owns 59 shares. Since then, we have a common interest and I speak to him a lot more than I ever did. This is worth even more to me than the Tesla gains. So thank you to Tesla and Elon Musk. You love to see things like this. And an awesome response here from Not Financial Advice. I introduced my dad to Nicholas Stock. We now live under a bridge together. It's us against the world as we scrap for survival. We're tighter than ever. Lex Friedman, who is a very special and talented human, shared a pretty cool chart of a GDP heat map almost, if you will. So I wanted to throw it up on the screen so you could pause, screenshot, take a look if you were interested. Here we get some pretty exciting news out of Giga Berlin from Alex. The wording's a little confusing, but he says, a German Model Y performance reservation holder informed me he was contacted by Tesla to prepare for delivery in two weeks to the end of the months. I'm not sure what exactly that means, but he asks, is Giga Berlin preparing for first deliveries? But there's more. Here we have Drive Tesla Canada, who has spoken with two customers who have Model Y performance cars on order in Europe. In both of these cases, they've been told to arrange their final payment in preparation for delivery. It should be noted there are no delivery dates, no VIN numbers, but if Tesla is asking for the final payment, it usually means delivery is imminent. And to be fair, these 30 or so vehicles sitting at Giga Berlin could have been imported from Giga Shanghai, but we are expecting the first deliveries out of Berlin to be the performance variant, so it would line up that they are gearing up for actual customer deliveries once they get that final green light approval. And here's an image of Tobias Lind of the Berlin parking lot with said vehicles. Mizuho Securities raised its Tesla price target to $1,300 up from 950, citing mainly expecting 4680 battery production to ramp in 2022. Most of us agree. I did, however, want to point out that I really do think this is one of the biggest risks to Tesla's scaling this year. It will be the 4680 production that will be critical, especially for Cybertruck and Semi, which may be arguably more of a 2023 endeavor. And I really hope that on the Q4 call and subsequent after that, that the analyst Analysts are wise in asking good pressing questions about 4680 production and how the ramp is going because it's such a crucial part of Tesla's next 24 months. And of course, hopefully Elon and team are in a sharing mood. Here we get a pretty cool story of a company with a prototype battery pack that took a Tesla Model S, a retrofit, 752 miles in the real world on a single charge. This was done by a two-year-old Michigan startup, Our Next Energy or One. And the CEO Mujib Ijaz has previously previously worked at both Apple and Ford. Now, yes, this was a prototype pack that was put into a Tesla Model S long range vehicle. It replaced the former 103.9 kilowatt hour pack with a 207.3 kilowatt hour battery. This drive took place in Michigan in mid-December. So yes, it was very cold and they averaged 55 miles per hour and it showed on the odometer traveling 752 miles. Once again, this prototype was just a proof of concept to prove to people that, hey, we can get ranges up in these higher figures eventually, specifically as battery costs continue to come down and as manufacturers continue to ramp up their scale. This one company focuses on conflict-free supply chains, which is good, and they are going to have a real product named Ares, which will use prismatic LFP cells in a structural cell
Intel to pack architecture. Probably the most trendy news of the day, Nikola is dropping its $2 billion patent against Tesla over the semi-truck design after about three years of back and forth. And it should be noted this dismissal was without prejudice, meaning the claims and counterclaims could be refiled. In some very important context to this conversation, Tesla Facts added first on Twitter, saying Tesla has successfully utilized their nuclear arsenal of EV patents. And then people complain, well, Elon open source Tesla's patents, right? Yes, but by suing, Nikola violated the good faith terms. From a Tesla document in red, a party is acting in good faith for so long as such party and its related or affiliated companies have not, asserted, helped others assert, or had a financial stake in any assertion of any patent or other IP against Tesla or any patent right against a third party for its use of technologies relating to EVs or related equipment. Put simply, Tesla's patent pledge is well-designed, which should cause any EV competitor to think twice before suing Tesla for IP claims. Because once they do, they lose access to all of Tesla's numerous EV patents and face counterclaims like Nikola did. And lastly, in a small section in the Tesla counterclaims filing against Nikola, Tesla lawyers brought the good faith clause into scope. This informed Nikola that Tesla believed Nikola is in violation of the good faith clause. The counterclaims were dropped in the settlement, as you can see right here. Moving on, we have to take a minute to talk about GM and what just happened today. So last night, Elon said room to improve after GM sold 26 electric vehicles in quarter four last year. First, Sawyer gives us a good summary. GM has unveiled the Silverado EV. I know a lot of people were waiting to see this. Here you get some details. We're talking spring 2023, we'll see. 400 mile range, we'll see. I'm basically not counting on any of these statistics given that it is so far out. And it's paired with GM having so much to prove in the EV world. Taking a look at the images, I think it looks decent. Let me know, what do you guys think? Do you like the styling? It's not a car I personally would ever drive, but it doesn't look too bad, but here's what just happened. So GM just had this event of sorts at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, where they unveiled some new products. And I have to say, this was the most cringeworthy event I have seen in recent memory for multiple reasons. One, the entire thing was scripted and uncomfortable. It's like GM was trying to have an Apple-esque event. The problem here was that the underlying technology that GM was talking about doesn't exist. It was basically an hour full of promises and pipe dream things, showcasing the flying vehicles and all of these concept cars. Yes, they unveiled some real things that should be actual products in the next few years, but nothing that is coming soon. It's all, like I said, just promises. Hands down though, the worst part for me was that Mary and her team continually doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on statements like we're leading the industry, we're leading the AV and the EV movement. And they tried to tug on people's heartstrings, playing some emotional music and talking about a movement, showing B-roll of different people in certain situations. And at one point, Mary literally said that no other automaker today can match GM's portfolio of EVs it's like, do we need to remind her that they don't have a portfolio of EVs? Anybody can come out and say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But right now they're selling two EVs, the Bolt and the Hummer. And like I said, they sold 26 in the entire quarter four. And look, you guys know I don't like to get worked up. I really try to stay unbiased and fair and to be objective, but I just can't deal with the lying and the, the way that this entire presentation was put together. It really just sat with me in a terrible way. And on a lighter note, have a listen to this and tell me if you hear what I hear. About the size of two laptops placed on top of each other, the system uses the latest Snapdragon Ride 5 nanometer system on chips. The system uses the latest Snapdragon Ride 5 nanometer system on chips. She said the Snapdragon Ride 5 as if that was one thing. It's not, it's the Snapdragon. The 5 went with the next part, it's a 5 nanometer chip. So sure, it's a presentation, I'm sure she's nervous, it could have been an honest mistake, but certain things like this just show the clear difference between someone who actually understands the technology and is speaking from knowledge and experience rather than someone who is just reading and really pulls into question if she actually understands any of this technology or what's really going on. With all that said, I'm going to cut myself off right here because I really don't like bashing these legacy auto companies, but when they do things that deserve being called out, I just, I have to call it as I see it. I'm just not very confident in GM's future at this moment. Okay, I lied, one more quick thing. Gary Black said, watching Mary Barra give the CES keynote speech is true kabuki theater. <laughs> this is so accurate.
Actually moving on, we get a quick note on Giga Texas. Travis County spokesperson Hector Nieto confirmed on Tuesday certain sections of Giga Texas have already received their respective certificates of compliance. So hopefully we don't run into any final approval situations at Giga Texas and they can start delivering vehicles here in the next few weeks. Let me know in the comments below right now who delivers a customer delivery first, Berlin or Austin. In case you missed it, Sony is now spinning up a new company to focus on, you guessed it, electric vehicles. It will be called Sony Mobility. And they said, with our imaging and sensing cloud, 5G and entertainment technologies combined with our contents mastery, we believe Sony is well positioned as a creative entertainment company to redefine mobility. Sure, if they wanna work with a producer of vehicles and maybe integrate some of their technology, that could be viable. But are they talking about manufacturing actual vehicles? I haven't learned that for sure just yet. As all that's really been said so far is they are exploring a commercial launch of electric vehicles. They did share this on Twitter though, Sony's Vision S, CES 2022, an image of some vehicles. So I guess we'll now watch for Sony in the EV space. The Kilowatts on Twitter shared a really cool video of BMW with a color changing car. How about that? It's pretty cool. A friend of mine on Twitter shared this with me from Co-op Funeral Care on Facebook. We're proud to introduce our brand new cutting edge Tesla hearse. It's only available for funerals arranged by Manor Park Care Center in London, but we're hoping to add more to our electric fleet soon. I think this is real. I could be wrong. I haven't looked into it any further, but there's another use case. A note on Lucid, they are talking about launching into Europe as soon as this year. Sadly, all they really said was stay tuned for country specific delivery information. In January of last year, Lucid started taking reservations in 15 European countries. Have a look at the list here if you would like. And yes, given the timeline of deliveries happening this year, these would be vehicles shipped and imported into these European countries. And the last thing today from Alex on Twitter, Daimler with 16 recalls in the last two months. Crankshaft can fail, entire engines, fire hazards, problems with the diesel particulate filter, issues with the steering, and last but not least, the airbag affected vehicles are in the millions. It's not just Tesla dealing with recalls. But that's all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.